Next, we have Ruslan and Ganesh. Uh, it's another one of those uh, talks which I alluded to in the in the opening and in the Prometheus updates, and how how in particular between Open Telemetry and Prometheus we tried really hard and worked very hard to to make certain that you ha actually have a fully compatible uh, native histogram implementation. And this is about how to how to actually use Open Telemetry's uh, native histogram with Prometheus. Round of applause. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our talk on using Open Telemetry's exponential. Thank you. Welcome to our talk on using Open Telemetry's exponential histograms in Prometheus. So before we begin, uh, let me introduce myself and my uh, co-presenter Ganesh. Ganesh is a senior software engineer at Grafana Labs. Uh, he's also a team member of uh, Prometheus, and uh, he is a maintainer uh, of Prometheus. Uh, TSDB. My name is Ruslan. Um, I am a member of uh, Open Telemetry uh, community, and at Grafana Labs, um, I'm working on uh, OTLP data ingestion into Grafana Cloud. So, Ganesh. Yeah. So before we talk about exponential histograms, let's go over a little bit of basics. Histogram is a distribution of your observations where we put uh, your observations into something called buckets. In this particular example, there are four buckets. The first one says there are 15 observations which took less than 0.1 seconds. Uh, the x-axis is showing you the boundary of the buckets, and the y-axis is the count in all of those buckets. Uh, and this is how it is stored in Prometheus right now. As Bjorn mentioned, uh, it's quite expensive, the classical histograms. Uh, every bucket takes one time series in Prometheus. On the right side, each line is a time series in Prometheus. And in addition to a time series for every bucket, you have a time series for the count, you have a time series for the sum for the histogram. So to represent a single histogram, you need a lot of time series. So, uh, there, is, there are a few problems with this design. Uh, one thing is the buckets are cumulative. For example, if um, one bucket is filled, uh, all the buckets which come after that need to account for this count. So the same uh, histogram that we saw here, if we take a different representation of buckets, a lot of buckets have repeated same values uh, because it's cumulative, so it can get expensive. And let's say uh, the bucket representation was uh, inefficient and you thought of changing the bucket layout, now you have to re-instrument your code and redeploy it everywhere. That is still one picture of this problem. Let's say you redeployed a different bucket layout later. Uh, you cannot correlate them easily. Uh, so you had one uh, different bucket layout, now you have a different bucket layout. You cannot uh, mix and match them uh, once you have changed the buckets. Uh, also, it takes a while to propagate all these changes across your system, and you have to wait for a long time so that all of them have a same bucket layout. And yeah, again, coming back to the same thing, it takes a lot of time series here. Now comes the exponential buckets. Uh, this is the basis for the exponential histograms that we are going to talk about. So I'm talking about the exponential uh, buckets in a neutral fashion for both Open Telemetry and Prometheus. Uh, so this is how the exponential bucket boundaries look like. Uh, so the bucket boundaries are fixed, but what you can control is the resolution of the buckets. Uh, so I'll uh, talk with example. I've used the formula on the right side, which is 2 power of 2 power of minus scale. For example, you saw Bjorn using a factor of 2 power of 2 power of minus 3. So we get that from this formula. Uh, we'll start with a simple uh, factor of 2 power of 2 power of 0, which gives you a factor of 2. So we start uh, all the bases from the bucket boundary of 1. So to get the next bucket boundary, you just multiply it with the factor, and you get 2 and you multiply it with the same factor again, and you get four. So it's like the percentage, uh, the ratio between uh, consecutive bucket boundaries is same. And to get the bucket boundary on the left side of one, you just divide by two, and divide by two again, and so on. And let's say this resolution was too high for you. You want to reduce the resolution. So you just change the scale to, let's say, minus one. So you get two power of two power of one, which is uh, four. So the bucket boundaries are now like one, four, 16, and so on and the similar thing on the other side. Similarly, there is 2 power 4, 2 power 8, and so on. 
this is uh, you are reducing the resolution in this direction. And on the other side, if you wanted to increase the resolution, I'll again start with the example of the factor 2 power of 1. So you have a bucket boundary 1 and 2. Now you want to go to the uh, immediate next resolution where you will put the scale as, let's say, 1. So it will be 2 power of 2 power of minus 1, which is square root of 2. So one good thing here is that uh, the bucket boundaries of factor 2 uh, remain same in the uh, higher resolution. So you still have 1 and 2, and you get a new bucket boundary between the existing buckets. And if you want to increase the resolution again, which is 2 power of 1 by 4, then the bucket boundaries of the previous resolution again stay constant. So I have color coded it in green, uh, which is same across all the resolutions, similarly the, the yellow and orange. Uh, so it's like with every increase in resolution, you are adding a new bucket boundary between existing bucket boundaries. Uh, the, the property of bucket boundaries being the same from the previous uh, resolution comes in handy uh, here, where let's say you had a resolution of a factor of 2 power 1, which is the uh, first bar chart here. So the boundaries are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. You can anytime convert it to a lower resolution. So the one in the middle has a, res a factor of 4. So you can just add up the buckets of the higher resolution to get the histogram of a lower resolution. And if you want to reduce the re resolution again, you can add up the uh, buckets again. So you can always convert from a higher resolution to a lower resolution histogram. Uh, so this is one of the ways where the changing bucket resolution does, doesn't really harm in correlating different histograms. If you had a histogram with a higher resolution and a histogram with a lower resolution, you just convert the histogram of the higher resolution to a low, lower resolution, and you can mix and match and do stuff with it. So that's about the basics of the bucket boundaries. Uh, now, Russell is going to talk about how it is stored in open telemetry. Uh, so let's talk how uh, those concepts are represented in open telemetry exponential histograms. Uh, so here is a simplified, a simplified overview of uh, exponential uh, histogram data point with some fields omitted for the sake of simplicity. Uh, let's briefly discuss each, uh, each field. Uh, let's start with the scale. So Ganesh already mentioned that there is a parameter called scale that uh, determines uh, the resolution of exponential histograms. And he also mentioned about uh, buckets boundaries. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but let's add some additional information and talk about uh, buckets indexing. Uh, so exponential histogram buckets also can be uh, accessed by index. Um, it is really important to note that uh, there is like zero index bucket, and it corresponds to the bucket with a lower boundary of one. Um, we will need inf this information later. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the following uh, fields are sum and count, where count is a total population of uh, his uh, observation in a histogram, and sum is a sum of all observation values in a histogram. Uh, the optional mean and max fields are used to record uh, minimum and maximum observation values in the histogram. Uh, the value of a start time um, <coughs> is used to, uh, is actually is den den denotes uh, a start time of uh, observations collection. Uh, <coughs> uh, zero threshold and zero count defines the zero bucket. A zero bucket contains actually a count of observations whose values are uh, less than or equal to the zero threshold. Uh, zero threshold is an arbitrary value, and uh, it is not related to the scale. Uh, the last field is uh, a positive buckets. Uh, please note that there is also negative buckets, and it's stored separately. But for the sake of simplicity, we will focus only on positive buckets. Uh, <clears throat> so exponential histogram um, uh, uses a dense representation uh, of buckets. So uh, the bucket range is going to be represented by the single offset value and uh, value counts uh, for those buckets. So, but, but let's take a look at an example. 
uh, and see how uh, <coughs> the buckets of this histogram is encoded. So here is a, an example of a histogram uh, that has a scale of zero. Uh, it has the following uh, bucket changes, and as you can see, there are some uh, value counts in those uh, buckets. So the buckets of this histogram <coughs> is encoded as following. Uh, so we store all the value, uh, all the count uh, counts for the buckets in a bucket counts array, uh, including also uh, empty buckets. Uh, the offset is set to minus one uh, because uh, there is a, a zero index uh, bucket that points to a bucket with a range one and two, and there is non-empty buckets on the left. So we have to shift, shift the offset uh, by one to the left. Yes, yeah, that's it. And Ganesh is going to talk about Prometheus native histograms now. Yeah. So the Prometheus native histograms looks very similar to open telemetry. So we have a schema, which is same as the scale. Only the name is different, but it's actually the same thing as scale uh, in open telemetry. And the other fields like count, sum, zero threshold, and zero count is exactly same as open telemetry, so there is nothing special here. There is one fundamental difference, as uh, Rasan mentioned, when you have, uh, when you specify a particular scale, you, you know what are the bucket boundaries. So you no longer need to specify a bucket with the boundary, you can just give an index and you, know, and you can get the bucket boundaries of the bucket. In open telemetry, uh, like the zero index is the bucket with the lower boundary of one, but in Prometheus, it is shifted by one. In Prometheus, the bucket with the upper boundary of one uh, is the bucket with index zero. That's the one fundamental difference in indexing the buckets. And here comes the main difference between the representation of histograms in open telemetry and Prometheus. Uh, we have something called spans and uh, deltas. And similar to uh, uh, open telemetry, like how we talked right now, I'm going to only talk about the positive buckets uh, for positive observations. Similarly, we have uh, for negative spans and negative deltas, which are a mirror image of the uh, positive buckets, uh, which are stored separately. But for simplicity, we'll only talk about the positive stuff. Uh, I'll take the same example and explain how the spans and deltas are stored. So Prometheus uses a sparse representation uh, of histograms as opposed to the denser presentation of open telemetry. In this particular case, uh, the spans has a list of tuples. Uh, the 0, 0,4 tells you that the first bucket starts at index 0, uh, which is 0 0.5 to 1. That's the bucket with index 0. And there are four buckets starting at this point. And then there is a gap of two buckets. So the second tuple says that there is an offset, which is there is a gap of two buckets and you have another bucket stored there, 2 comma 1. So the spans tells you what's the representation of the bucket in the layout. And there is deltas. Delta stores the uh, delta encoded values of the buckets that are filled. So because there are five buckets filled here, there are only five numbers in the deltas. And the delta is taken with the previous bucket. So let's say you had 10 empty buckets between the fourth and the fifth bucket in which case the deltas won't change, only the spans uh, which encodes the layout changes. For example, it would be 0, 0,4 and 10, 1, saying that there are 10 empty buckets between the first four and the last bucket. So this is how it is stored in Prometheus. That's the fundamental difference. So now that we have this uh, precedent set, uh, Rasna is going to talk about the translation. So at this point, you should have a good um overview of uh, open telemetry exponential and Prometheus native histogram structures. Uh, so let's now explore how we can uh, translate exponential histogram to a native histogram. Uh, let's start with uh, exponential scale and native uh, histogram schema. Uh, so native uh, histogram schema allows values that allows uh, schema values that fall in a range from minus four to eight uh, inclusively. So if exponential scale has a value greater than eight, uh, we can uh, downscale the histogram and merge the buckets. That's what uh, Ganesh mentioned before. <clears throat> if uh, scale is less than minus four, uh, the histogram data points will be dropped. Uh, it worth mentioning that. Uh, 
for the histograms with a scale uh, that is less than minus four will result in a bucket range with, in a really wide bucket ranges. And the practical use of uh, such uh, wide ranges is actually questionable. Uh, next field, next fields count and sum. Uh, so the count and sum of exponential and native histograms are directly translated. <clears throat> uh, Prometheus doesn't have uh, min and max fields, so how do we handle translation of uh, those fields? Uh, so we don't. You can use uh, PromQL uh, histogram quantile function uh, to approximate mean and max values uh, of the observation values from the observation values. Start time. Start time. Uh, Prometheus native histogram doesn't have uh, relevant fields, so we don't use uh, the start time field. In, uh, in the translation. So zero uh, bucket fields, so zero threshold and zero count uh, fields of exponential and native histogram are translated directly. And we left with uh, positive buckets. So uh, what we are trying to, to do here, so we are essentially trying to convert uh, <coughs> dense uh, buckets layout representation of uh, exponential histogram to a sparse uh, buckets layout representation of uh, native histogram. Uh, so let's walk uh, uh, through the translation steps. So let's look at an example of the histogram that we're already familiar with, and we all already know how these uh, buckets are represented by two types of histograms. So let's start with the translation. So first, <coughs> Uh, contiguous uh, non-empty buckets of an exponential histogram is going to be encoded by um, the span of the length four. And uh, the absolute count values of exponential histogram uh, are going to be encoded using the delta encoding. So we see that absolute values 2, 1, 3, 2, and uh, the delta encoding would result into 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1. So <clears throat> we also know that uh, there is a difference uh, in uh, zero index buckets and that um, native histogram um, offset is shifted by one. Uh, so we have to actually adjust uh, the offset values uh, of native histogram spans. So we have to do it actually only for the first span uh, because all the, consequent span, all, all the uh, sub subsequent spans are going to be created based on uh, the preceding spans. So we see that offset was minus one, and for the first uh, span we have the offset of zero. So the sparse buckets uh, are encoded with a subsequent uh, offset value of the span, of the next span, and we left with uh, uh, one non-empty uh, bucket uh, that has uh, absolute count value of three, and it's going to be encoded uh, with a span uh, that has offset of two and the length of one. And the delta val value for this um, <coughs> uh, bucket is one. So at this point, we have translated uh, the exponential histogram to um, native histogram. So we are done with the theoretical part of the talk. So now let's take a look at uh, hypothetical uh, system setup that uses uh, exponential histograms. So in this setup, we have a uh, hotel instrumented application logic that produces exponential uh, histograms and hotel collector uh, receives this ATLTP payload that has exponential histograms. So uh, currently, uh, the translation uh, from exponential to native histograms is implemented only in a, a hotel collector, Prometheus remote write exporter. <coughs> so, uh, Thus, we have to enable a uh, remote write receiver uh, on a Prometheus server. And additionally, we have to also uh, enable the native histogram feature uh, since it is still a beta feature in, in Prometheus. Um, besides that, we don't have to uh, add any other configuration to a tel collector because uh, Prometheus remote write exporter translates the histograms automatically. 
So if you want to learn more about uh, exponential and native histograms, uh, you can take a look at OTEP about adding exponential bucketing to, hist uh, to histogram brought above, or um, design doc uh, about sparse high resolution histograms uh, for Prometheus uh, from Bern. Thank you, thank you for your attention. If you want to get the slides, you can scan this code. And if you want to talk to us, you can find us at the booth number 36, I think starting from tomorrow. Thank you. Um, as I am the one running around for questions, I get to ask a question. Um, so why, is, why isn't it called the same thing? Why is one exponential histogram and other native histograms? Uh, okay. I can tell about Prometheus. Uh, Bjorn can correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, Prometheus, uh, like I showed uh, how it represented before, it was a hack to show histograms in time series. We hacked together uh, multiple time series to show a particular histogram. But right now, with the native histograms, uh, Prometheus is getting the native support of storing the histogram st uh, structure in the TSTB. The TSTB could only store float 64 as a value previously. But now, Prometheus can store the complex data structure of a histogram in the TSTB natively. So in case of Prometheus, we call it a native histogram in the context of Prometheus. But the exponential histogram is the actual thing that encompasses the fundamentals of the histogram. So that's why open telemetry is exponential, I guess. That makes sense, yeah. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, we have one here. Hi. How are you all using um, uh, the native histograms at Grafana? Can you give an example? Yeah, so the talk by Bjorn was the only thing that we are using for histograms, I guess. We don't have it in production yet. We are getting there slowly. So we are still in the phase of testing out the histograms in an experimental fashion. But uh, as soon as we have something ready in Grafana Memir, for example, uh, we will start to scrape it in Prometheus and remote write it to Grafana Memir uh, once it has a stable support. And that's our plan to use uh, native histograms across our environment. Beyond has a question. Oh, no. So did the, you said the schemas or the um, scale <laughs> has different limits, right? In, in Otel is unlimited, essentially. Did it ever happen in practice that you had to, like that, that Otel was sending a scale that Prometheus couldn't handle? Or was that like more theoretical problem? I guess the question was, was there any case uh, where Otel was sending a scale that Prometheus could not handle? Yes, yeah. yeah, it's a case when you have a scale that is uh, lower than minus four. I think for that case, we just like drop, current implementation just drops uh, the histogram data points now. I think there were some, uh, s not suggestions, some ideas from uh, the community. Uh, to uh, employ like infinite buckets, bucket for that, or maybe uh, set uh, the minimum scale in uh, hotel SDK kind of to help handle this issue. And if it's higher than eight, then we can just like downscale. Okay, but the question is, did it actually happen in practice, right? In theory, you explained it, right? I mean, if it ever happens in practice, Prometheus will just extend their range, right? I think the Prometheus stance is there is just, it will never happen in practice. But if it does, Prometheus will change. Promise. <laughs> uh, yeah, any other questions? Okay, we have one more question. I think this should be the final one. <laughs> Getting my work out in. Uh, so you talked about open telemetry using a dense representation and Prometheus using a sparse representation of the positive and negative buckets. It was my understanding, I thought, that the positive buckets in OTLP was a repeating value so that the offset could skip a gap and be used to create a sparse representation. Is that correct, or do I have a misunderstanding there? Uh, can you repeat the last part of your question? I could not. Uh, 
Sure. So if the positive buckets is a repeating value and you have an offset starting at negative one like you had before, um, but then a gap of two buckets, so you've got four values, you could then have an, uh, another positive buckets value in that repeating value set that has an offset of four to represent that last bucket. Is, is that correct? Um, so uh, I still did not understand the question completely, but uh, was there a question like if there was a gap of four buckets, something like that? I'm sorry. Uh, I guess the, the question was, does open telemetry really use a dense representation, and does it have to have zero values for all buckets that are empty, or is it possible to create a sparse representation within the OTLP and have that savings? Okay. Uh, so question, is it like, can open telemetry use the sparse representation for the zero buckets? I'm not sure. I think no. Uh, uh, Ruslan says no, you can't have sparse I'm representation sure. in open telemetry. Sure. Cool. All right. Uh, that's it. But like the speakers will be around if you have more questions. Uh, yeah. Thank you.